Right. Welcome to the August 15th Aries Cloud Asian Python Maintainers meeting. PR is to finalizing 0, 10, 0, and on creds, and then did peer work. Um, hoping that um, who's here? Um, Jason, can you see if uh, you can ping Cyro to see if he's going to make it? It would be helpful to have him here because we're going to flow yeah, right into. Isn't he on holidays this week? No, nope, he's back today. Okay, I'll uh, see if I can dig him up somewhere. Okay, if you could just send him a note. Um, a reminder: this is a, a Linux Foundation Hyperledger meeting. Antitrust policy is in effect. Code of conduct is in effect. Welcome all. Okay, um, we'll start with a PR review um, and head to uh, finalizing 010 after that. So if we look at what's been merged lately. Um, um, so this morning we did the legacy uh, peer did resolver. Um, so that is in. Um, SNCC was added. Is that how you pronounce it? I think so. SNCC. We'll go with that. Um, was added. Um, any thoughts? Last I checked, there was, um, as I said in the thing, 236 issues which terrifies me. Um, has anyone looked at the reports at all yet? I guess we can worry about that later. Um, I did I did briefly scan through them. I think a lot of them are, are pretty minor things. Uh, a lot of them would be addressed by some other things that we have pointed out as potentially doing already anyways. Um, okay. Like? like uh, trimming down the Docker images to not include things like Vim or curl and those sorts oh, of things. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Um, we did remove the indie tests from the workflows. Um, I don't know how much faster things are now as anyone, I guess that legacy peer would have run through the overall tests. But that's good. Um, and then this fix ensure request matches offer. What was that, Daniel? Remind us. So in JSON LD creds, um, for an right. exchange that was started with an offer, it was possible for the request that the holder sent back to be different from the offer. And if you were on auto issue, it wouldn't check that it hadn't changed between the offer and the request and would just automatically issue whatever was in the request. Yeah. Okay. Um, we did the release um, rather suddenly. Um, that was triggered by this, um, which was that Kim did a, uh, Kim Ebert did a fix to um, speed up multi-use invitation handling once the load got higher. That um, duplicated uh, a webhook being emitted, which Emiliano um, suppressed in 8082. And what was not understood was that by suppressing that, a, a follow-on webhook was not emitted, um, which was rather weird. So um anyway that's been corrected and so we now have the right thing happening um this got merged in um just documentation and docker related updates um not sure quite how uh shanjot did it without a review required but i did look at it and it's all just documentation and docker related so that's okay um and then um previous we already discussed all of these things i think um 
yeah, I think we're caught up on what's been merged. Let's talk about what's coming. We got nine left. So work in, I believe this is, yeah, work in progress. So the nightly build um, just happened a few minutes ago. Um, we have this um, TAA acceptance. Daniel put a comment, Andrew, for you to take a look at and get your views on this one. Um, yeah, I guess. Probably. Go ahead. There, there's another PR and indie VDR, I think, related to this. Mm -hmm. And and worthwhile. Uh, it seems reasonable, but I'm not totally sure why this is showing up now, unless something uh, like it maybe it depends on the Python version that's in use. I'm not sure. Interesting. Did he say why he put issues in for each? Um, I think the other issue he <laughs> explains that it has to do with be an incorrect clock on the system. Let's see. Time too precise error if container time zone is not UTC. So I I mean obviously he was getting an error at some point in trying to run it. So this is and fixed it this way. I don't know when this changed in Indy Plenum, um, but at, at one point it only had to be rounded off to like the nearest minute or something. The, the privacy risk was when you were sending milliseconds, I think, something like that, but well, nice. now it has to be midnight. Um, it might be easiest to just treat it as an integer and round it off. Okay, well, you've got that one for now, if you could. Yeah. Um, let me go back to the pull request. I can assign this to you just so you know. I think you have the wrong one selected there. Well, that's a bad thing. Thank you, I give up. Okay, proof negotiation. Um, so this was uh, one that was opened by, I think Persivis was the organization. I, I don't know how to pronounce the original author's name, but uh, it, it seemed like a pretty reasonable change. Uh, so I, I decided to help resurrect it a bit. Um, I, I think there's, I think it makes sense to move the logic that was added to the request handler to a different admin API endpoint. Um, so there's some additional changes that I, I think are, are good to make here. Um, but I, I think having the ability to do the proof neg negotiation, if you want to, I think makes sense. Um, and the code was relatively clean. So good. Okay. We'll leave that one to you. Yeah. Um, Jason progress on this one. Yeah. Um, so I just had another comment this morning based on Daniel's because I, wasn't able to do the existing tests use schema name and schema uh, version to do like restrictions on the proof requests. Yeah. So, so I started with that and it didn't work. Um, then I flipped it to the cred def ID, which was, was what Daniel used in the test script and it worked. So the proof requests work, but not the same as a previous one. And Daniel said that that's not, <laughs> That's not the case. So I'm going to be today. I'm investigating why that's not working. It's quite possible. It's just something that I'm doing, but I need to get that squared away um, so that existing proof requests would work. Yeah, it's, that's very weird. The schema name. Yeah, it, it it could very well just be me finger fumbling or whatever. But uh, yeah, let's. Well, to so, uh, to be. No. Transparent, I think all I did test in practice was the cred def ID. So it's also very possible that I missed something when I was yeah. going through. So any, anyway, it was good. Thanks for telling me that that's not the expected behavior. So I'm going to look at that and see if I can figure that out. Um, 
Okay. Um, and then we can decide if I figure out what it is, if it's a big thing, then maybe we put this PR in and then do a separate PR for a fix or if it's something small I'll include it in here. So uh, yeah. Okay. yeah. So okay. the other issue I had was just, it was, I don't think it's a big deal because obviously running the actual run BDD um, scripts and how we're doing it work. I just been running it, the behave from like just running behave. Right. I've got to try and figure out what configurations match up in, and, and I was just getting, so I'm just leaving it to <laughs> using dev containers. So some things are in Docker, some things are in dev container Docker, some things are running the behave script from the command line, all this and it kind of sends things weirdly. But as soon as I run the same exact code using the run BDD um, script, it works. So I'm leaving that as a development box <laughs> issue only but the presentation pre -pre presentation yeah i'm going to spend today trying to figure that out okay yeah all right and then um <clears throat> now in doing that it looks like all is there have you done code changes for this or is this just activating tests um so they're net new tests based exactly on the previous ones, but I have to explicitly say use the non-creds API. So as much of it's reusing the existing BDD test code, basically it's just like the kickoff part of it is to say use a non-creds to create the scheme and cred def, use a non-creds to revoke. Um, so there's not actually a lot of new code in the, like there's some stuff in agent container and agent pi, but it's basically just, there's not a lot of new code. <laughs> so so I did have to do some stuff like where you're at right now. Um, so these bind providers, I need them in place. Whether though, I don't think those are going to stick around as we get to the next kind of things, um, as we, um, the ticket that's to kind of, touch up all the actual API endpoints, right? Uh, okay. convert those things. So, but for right now with those things in place, I need those because those are um, the endpoints they're getting hit that are trying to do um, to handle the issuance and um, whatnot are expecting those things in place. So some of, the, some of the code that I have put in there, I think is just very temporary. Um, okay. Like the code that's in, yeah, that that's it, right? I've just got the yeah, the profile. That's it. Everything else is test code. Um, and again, it's basically reusing stuff and just having a couple of kickoff points. So there's not a lot of new code, really. Okay. Um, but the plan is to go next to making the existing endpoints work with these tests. Yeah, and then and then we can start. So I basically turned off a whole pile of existing tests. That was the only way to get it to work because we know those endpoints aren't working. So yeah, so once this is in with these tests work, then it's to start going back and it re enabling the old tests as we transition the endpoints that they're using to <laughs> get up to date. So yeah. hopefully by the next one where we say, okay, the, these endpoints that aren't working, get transitioned out, then we just flip on the old tests and go, cool, it all works, but it's kind of an all the non-creds kind of underneath the covers. Um, so. Got it. Excellent. Okay, good. Um, this one, let's talk about this one at when we talk about peer vids. This is ready to go, right, Daniel? Uh, no. no. Yeah, yeah, there's uh, some unit tests that I need to sort out. Um, and there's some caching questions that I'm considering in terms of where caching should be occurring, whether it's at the global resolver layer or at the method specific resolver layer. Um, right. So there's a couple more things that I'm working on here still. Okay. Um, but we'll talk about this one. So 2404 is in, so this can now go. Um, yep. Once yep. You I've, I've rebased this and everything. I, I, it's just pending some additional work. Yep. Yep. Okay. No progress on this yet. Um, we'll talk about uh, Cyro's work in a bit, Jason's work in a bit. Um, 
no movement from me on this one either. Who's got this one? You've got this one as a reviewer? Yeah. Okay. And then we're going to leave this one for now because this will play into what's happening with the tails file anyway and all that. So, um, yeah, we'll just leave that one for now. Okay. Um, of these, um, do we want to get 2409? Would you like that in 010? If we can, I think that would be great. Okay. Um, yeah. And then, um, Andrew, if you could look at this one, we could also see about helping this guy out and whoever this is, this person out and getting it into um, into 010 as well, if it's not dangerous. If you think it is questionable and want to have conversations about it, um, we can defer it and make sure it stays till after 010. Um, we have deployed 010 RC0, didn't have any issues with it. Um, do you think we would do a RC1, Daniel, before we do the final? Or are you okay with, uh, do you think these are the ones we've merged, 2404 and 09 are safe enough? I would probably feel more comfortable having a release candidate out to test against like plugins and things Good. before going to a final. Okay. So I will do um wait for 2409 and then do an RC1 and then we'll go to final. Okay. Good. Um so that covers the set, the next topic. So um 2409 first RC1 and final okay and progress this may be a shorter meeting than i thought okay good uh and on creds progress next steps um i think jason you know what you've got um on that and we've talked about it already which is getting the um existing um finish off pdd tests and then existing um existing endpoints Plus. yeah can, can we coordinate um 2411 merge main into an on creds rs first oh, right right, so, right yeah right. so i just did a quick little thing yesterday just to try it and see there's really not most of the stuff is going to be pretty straightforward because it's just like comments and readmes and blah 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 pretty straightforward but um it's probably andrew and daniel to have to take a look it's Ask our profile, core conductor, ledger base, revocation manager, revocation models, issue or cred rev has stuff in there that I think the people that know what's going on should do and not uh, someone like me that are just making assumptions was like, that looks right. Um, but I don't are think it'll take too long, but I could be wrong. Are those all um, tied to that one update? Are that is this all tied to the change Andrew made? In... Yes. Yeah. Okay. As far as I can tell, anyway, yeah, there was just kind of two things going on at the same time in exactly the same areas. So, um, yeah, as far as I can tell, that's where the real impact is. Everything else is pretty much straightforward. Um, so, which is good. Not a lot of merge conflicts, considering how many things have been uh, put in there. But, um, and I think between the two two of them that know what. The before yeah. and afters are um, it shouldn't take too long but logistically how does this work how do you do this um i'm not a pro at all that kind of stuff so i'm sure there's a many different approaches i just i just did it as, as a sample as i merged main into a non-creds rs just to see what the differences were yeah i think I, you I, go the other way i don't know <laughs> i think you can do it kind of a bunch of different ways but I think the the key thing is is mapping changes that were made in the the indie credx stuff, uh, mapping those back onto the non creds things, um, and accounting for 
the slight differences between the non crit RS and indie crit X library. Um, yeah, I think it will require just having a little bit more background with the changes. This has been something that I've been planning to do. Um, I, I've intended to do this, uh, just kind of been focused on the 2409 and 2404 stuff for the moment. So once I get those cleared up, I can take a look at these. Okay, I was more wondering what the Git, what's the Git process? Like, how do you merge these into the branch? Do you just go PR by PR and merge them in? Uh, we would just merge main into a non credit RS and just address okay. it, address any merge conflicts at, at that point. I, I don't think it'll be, the Git process itself is straightforward since it's just the okay. one action, but yeah. Yeah, I, um, I've just been cherry picking stuff as I needed to get to the BDD test stuff kind of working. So there's a few commits, but I don't think you'd want to cherry pick the uh, like 60 or 70 commits that have <laughs> been in. So yeah, and like I said, like just the, a lot of files change, but really there was only like those, those are the only ones that were in conflict that were like logical. Like as Daniel's saying, there's some stuff that's changed. Everything else is pretty straightforward. So yeah, I'd, I'd like to see it get done before I start adapting the endpoints. Yeah. Um, just because I think that one I'll be trampling on some existing changes and stuff like that. So it's just easier for my my little brain if it's all cleared up before. But um so we'll Dan, you get that one. Um I was intending to at least. Um I think the changes on 2409, I'm probably gonna take at least another day or so to wrap up things there, I think. Um so I I don't uh if it makes sense to you know let somebody else handle that then sure i'm fine with that but if if i'm the first one to get to it i'm happy to look at that andrew do you think you have a time to do this one um not sure what's required for me on on this one just the merge you mean yeah the so what will happen is merging main into the non credits branch we have the two Mm -hmm. um, branches but what's going to come out of it is there's a there's going to be a you know the anoncreds rs branch what's going to come out of that is all of the changes that you made for getting after the cl signatures update that got pulled into credx those same changes have to be resolved in the anoncreds branch because they're they're in the same place yeah wasn't a huge set of changes. Um, yeah. That's and what I don't know if there's been a, a non creds release, but uh, it's mostly oh. synced up with the same changes now as in CredX. I thought there was a release of a non creds. I uh, can check. Shoot. Yeah, it was just a 010 release, June 2nd. I think Akif did some work, but maybe it's not been released. Are you thinking that, Stephen? Well, I know. Yeah, so his release has been, or his PR has been merged. So we've we've updated to CL Signature 02. We've just never done a release. Sorry, um, CredX has a release with the CL Signatures. Zero two stuff, but a non creds doesn't yet. Okay, okay, so that's needed sooner than later. Can we just do a zero two? Or well, okay, so that's needed first. So I noticed that the JavaScript wrapper there's an open PR for that in the non creds RS. I wonder if if that's what's being waited on getting that in so they can have the the changes updated in that wrapper. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Okay. Um and then there's the, the question of the right. master secret link secret but formatting well, formatting is a strain right now.
Okay. So at least if you, Andrew, if you could take on that one as a priority, I don't know how it fits with, with the other work you're doing, but um, add that to your list of, of getting this done. And then if you, if, if you get to that before um, Daniel does, it gets to this one, if, you know, if this, if you're able to get to this one as well before um, Daniel do that one as well. But the main thing is for sure, I think your expertise is needed on getting a release of an on RS done. Hey, it, yeah, I can ask. Yeah. More, more work pending there. Okay. Um, yeah, I wasn't certain if the non-creds RS implementation is meant to replace the IndieCred X1 in Akapai or? Yes. Yes, it is. Okay. But like, doesn't that create an, a problem for issuers that are doing the Delta-based revocation? Um... <laughs> So that's a topic we need to discuss because <laughs> I don't I don't understand um, how where that comes into play. So when you say issuers that are doing delta based revocation um, at the level that most people are interacting with Akapai, they're not necessarily aware of the fact that they're doing delta based revocation, right? So yeah. the the approach that we took in the non creds RS stuff was that we would, um, in the generic non creds ledger agnostic interface, uh, we would treat changes as if they were happening on full status revocation status list, whatever we're calling them. Um, and then in the indie and the legacy indie and the future did indie, uh, uh non creds registry that full status list would just be mapped to a set of deltas. Um, and then like each operation that is done to change the state, like publishing revocations or, or revoking a credential and then subsequently publishing uh, that interface, it looks more or less the same as it did with the delta base since that was kind of a detail that was hidden away from the controller layer anyways. So it, it, it translates from ledger agnostic to indie specific idioms, I guess, uh, in the process of using the indie ledger. Okay. Well, great. Uh, glad nothing needs to be added to an on creds to support that then. I mean, I think there might be some things that we could potentially say could make our job easier in terms of like mapping back and forth. But I, yeah, I don't know that those necessarily are changes that are needed at the non creds layer to support that or not. But... Yeah, I mean, it should be possible to translate those things in, in Python. You're just right. The yeah. accumulator is already is, is not going to change. It's just the yeah. issued and revoked indexes. Right versus the, the bitmap i guess yeah so i think i think the only thing that we had to do that was like maybe a little strange was we needed to keep around the previous accumulator since that's not something that's tracked inside of the uh uh the anon creds rs object anymore when it was something we needed for the deltas or something like that it's been a while since i've looked at it but yeah i think it was possible. yeah that makes sense yeah in in Akapai, so would we for each registry have to maintain the full state in Akapai? Um, as it happens, Akapai basically already was keeping track okay. of all the credentials that had been uh, issued and revoked. Yeah, um, India SDK does that, but then it hides it from you. Yeah. Okay, that's what I was worried about was that the issuer wouldn't know the state, but but obviously that could be retrieved from the ledger if we really had to. But you're saying it's already in Akapai. 
Yeah, that was information that was being stored and used for processing otherwise. Okay. Um, and anyways, so yeah, it was already available. Does that alleviate your fears, Andrew? Yeah, yeah, I uh, just wasn't sure what the com if there was compatibility with the deltas now that status list is being used. Okay, sounds good. Okay, good. And and to be clear, we're eliminating the endpoints that allow the controller to directly control registries. That that all the handling of the registries is within Akapai, and the controller doesn't have any say over the the actual handling of the registries, the creation, the update. Right. The controller just says publish. The controller just says issue. And when you run out of one, a new one gets created. The controller says revoke. And that gets put into a pending queue. The, the controller says publish. And by, by cred def, published by CredDef, and all of the registries that need to be published are published. And, and the controller doesn't have any access to those. So that's the big change from a controller perspective. OK, so this is a conversation that sort of came up yesterday with Andrew and I. So we're happy with that, which is good. So I'm not going to create a new issue. We're just going to assume it's covered. Should I document that at all? I think we're okay. Yeah, I think we're okay. Okay. We'll be covered by unit tests, I imagine. Yep. Um, oh, we got a new one. 12 minutes ago, um, there is a, um, Ariel has a JS update, okay. And these two are old and probably not gonna get put in. Okay. And on Chris RS, um, I'll add some notes in here. Is this the right one? This should be CredX. Um, I'll document this after. Um, any other issues? Um, <laughs> this one came in. Um, so there's a, should, should there be an endpoint that allows a connection alias to be updated? So that's, um, I think Lucas just wants to get his hands dirty a little bit in the code. So there's a plugin that I wrote for traction that does exactly that. Yeah. Uh, so, but it does make sense that in Akapai it be allowed. So this would be extending one of the existing endpoints. Um, yeah, existing. I don't know. I think it's there might be a whole new endpoint anyway. Yeah. Oh really? There's no. Yeah, I guess not. There's no endpoint for connections. Yeah, I don't think there's anything to update connection data. So this is basically putting it. I think a put in there, and then it only allows to update the given field. And then what fields are you allowed to update? Alias. <laughs> There's nothing yeah. else that makes sense. Um, I don't think so, but if I remember correctly, I think if you, we just kind of just change the validation. If we decided to add in another field, we just change the validation on that to say, "Cool, here's a new field, whatever." Okay. We in traction, they just needed to be able to do that because, um, yeah, people can't decide on what they want to name their connections. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, you may, you may want to change the con the name of your contact in the in the list. That's yeah. kind of like the idea, and that's where it's derived yeah. from. Yeah, I mean, to me, it makes sense. Um, 
so if, we'll we'll see where this lands on a BC Gov priority. But Daniel, Shar, Andrew, you don't have any objections to that being added? I don't think I have any objections. Uh, the connection alias feature is not one that I use frequently or have seen in use frequently. So I, it's not one that I generally pay a ton of attention to, I guess. So, but yeah. It's benign. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't really see why you would update it after you created it, but it can't hurt, I guess. Yeah, it becomes obvious when you're using traction itself because that's, you've got a whole list. You see visually your whole list of connections and that's the most important right visually to an end user and it becomes pretty apparent that <laughs> oh this isn't exactly what i want to name it so it's is either you know like when we first did traction and it had its own database all that stuff was done in its own database but um yeah so yeah i mean it doesn't really impact the actual workings of hackapi <laughs> yeah um our the pagination i removed the anon creds on this um just to move it into a later broader topic okay i don't see anything else um that we that we want to prioritize in the in these um at some point i'm going to go through all 217 issues and kick a bunch. I, I took a look at the very, very old ones, and I realized I've done a culling of them because the very, very old ones I still think are not <laughs> um, worth keeping around. Um, so perhaps someday they'll be gotten to, but um, so um, some culling has been done, but it's time for another pass through a bunch of the more recent ones last six months, probably. Okay. Um, that's all I had. Any other topics um, people wanted to discuss as far as open discussion um, issues? This open API, did that actually get resolved with? No, that kind of fell off my uh, fell off my to do list. I recall things. the marshmallow updates came in from. Um, Moritz, I believe. Right. Yeah, he had uh, he raised a point that there are some inconsistencies with the open API and and uh, what was actually being expected. Um, I basically told him I looked at this. I didn't find a really super favorable answer to the issue that you're addressing. Um, see if you can come up with something better, I guess. Um, yeah. But yeah. OK. OK, we did resolve the Indie Tail server. We got a new release of that out. It's been tested and merged into the or, or being used by the new um, uh, by the new BDD test. So that worked and we've stopped running Indie tests. So there you go. OK, um, we had planned a meeting, um, Daniel, uh, Jason Syrituck and myself on did peer work. So people are welcome to drop off or stick around to listen to that as we um, progress into did peer discussions. Up to you. Woot. I'm, I'm going to leave it on in the background so I can get some information in my brain, but I don't think I'll be contributing to <laughs> what you guys are talking about, but I kind of need to know what's going on. Just okay. fill in some gaps. So I'll be here, but probably not yapping. Yeah, Yep. Yeah, I'll stay on as well. Okay. Um, first, let's start with. Um, so, what we're trying to do is is um, align where Jason is on the peer did work. Um, make sure we're all in sync on what's left to do, and try to sort that out. Um, Twenty four oh nine comes into play because this has to do with. Did resolvers and and um, connections and peer did so we want to look at that and then just nail down what we're going to do with um, transitioning from unqualified to did peer two and three dids in the future. So Daniel, why don't you start with this one? 
that 24 yeah. matters in 2409. Yeah. Um, okay. So to provide just a little bit of background of, of why I'm working on this, um, I'm working with SIGBA. They're really interested in enabling DID communication over DID web DIDs. Um, okay. So I've been pushing on that front. Uh, there are a bunch of recent changes that um, made it so did web could be used in more contexts within Akapai. Um, and it was like really close to being possible to exchange those in a did exchange protocol. Um, so I, I started filling the gap between where we were and, and having the opportunity to send um, when you're doing a, a did exchange request to just put a did web did in the request. And then the response also being able to put a did web did and omitting the did document from the did exchange request. Um, so that, that's ultimately the goal of these changes, but they, they, the fix ended up overlapping a little bit with the period work that's going on in parallel. Yeah, because when you send a did, did peer two, that's all you send is the did, you don't send the did doc. Right, exactly. Um, <clears throat> so in, in order to support um not expecting a did document to to exist within a did exchange request or a did exchange response um i adjusted uh let me look at the changes here just to make sure i'm grounding myself um so i, I adjusted the way that we do resolution of inbound connections um no sorry i didn't do that yet did i do that uh, the more important part is uh, the resolving of connection targets, or how do we determine how we send a message to one of our connections? Um, so if you scroll down just a little bit further in the base manager there, I added on line 336 uh, a resolve connection targets, which will use the did resolver interface to resolve a did and then extract connection target information out of the did document that is resolved um, from the did. Um, and then 2404, I added a, uh, a legacy peer did resolver. So something that was looking in our own wallet to pull up the, the did doc that we stored for a connection. Um, and so that combined with this change um, makes it so our, our lookup of connection target information is consistent regardless of whether we are resolving the did um, or if we're doing like a wallet lookup for a did uh, to determine that information. Okay, so let me make sure, figure out, I'm, I'm about to send a message to a connection. Mm -hmm. I go to the connection rec and grab their did, and then I call this function to get the, endpoint recipient keys and routing keys for right. the for the message that I'm going to send right okay so, yeah, so so in fact I do use the did and then the other thing that that clarified for me and again this is I'm really starting from nothing because I don't code um we have a, a we have a set of connections, but we do also have a set of did. So the connection does not contain the actual did doc information. The connection simply contains the did, and we have another data model or data collection that is the set of dids we we know about. Yeah, and and the did doc. So that's how the two work together. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so um, okay. let's see, scanning through kind of some of the rest of the changes that were made in here. Um, yeah, the other changes are more specific to the handling of the did exchange requests and responses. Um, one of the interesting things is with didcom v1, um, since we receive messages to keys and the sender of the messages are identified by keys, like the base 58 encoding of those keys. Yeah. Uh, we need to map from key to did and then from did to connection in order to associate a 
uh, an inbound message with a, a specific connection. Right. Um, so even when we're resolving DIDs uh, and not parsing a DID document that was received in the DID exchange request, um, on receipt of the DID exchange request or response, we still actually need to resolve the DID to extract the keys and then to store a mapping from those keys to the DID so we can later associate connections with those uh, keys. Okay, and let me understand that by playing that back to you. When I receive a message, um, the message contains the key that was used to encrypt the message. Yeah. It doesn't contain the DID or a reference to the DID, it contains the key itself. Yeah. And what I've got to do is figure out what connection that's associated with. And I do that by, but the way that's done is there's a key to did mapping and then a did to connection mapping. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So, so even when we're receiving dids, there's a resolve step that needs to take place during did exchange to make sure that we can actually. Uh, All right complete the connection at that point. What I was trying to figure out was um, I had sort of, <laughs> when I was talking to Jason, I sort of put down, you know, there's the, there's the did, you know, the unqualified and, you know, peer did processing when you establish a connection, when there's a, you know, a request and a response, but I was questioning whether it was ever used again. And now I know it is used again. It's used when sending because you start with a connection and then on receipt, you start with a key, but you go not from the key to the connection, but you go from the key to the did to the connection. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Um, um, so it yeah, so this PR just makes it so when we are receiving those DIDs, uh, we can determine the, the the information required to send a message to it, the connection target, in right. a way that is consistent, regardless of whether that that DID is a, a peer DID or a legacy peer DID in this case, or a, a, a public DID that's resolved off of by following a DID method, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And, then, and then you're getting um, the caching comes into play because um, you've got to figure out how long before I go and grab the did doc again. You're going to keep a copy of the did doc locally, the did web did doc yeah. locally, but you don't want that to become overly stale in case the did web has been rotated and you and you weren't notified of it. Right. There's no there's no push notification that it did the web has been changed. Right. Yeah. Okay. And even in slightly shorter time frames, uh, in the process of completing an issue credential protocol, you know, there's several messages sent back and forth in that process. Yeah. And if you're having to resolve the did web each time to determine how to send the next message, yeah. That's of course uh, less than optimal, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Now, of course, if it's a did peer, there's nowhere else to look for it. So that's a non. -issue. Yeah. Okay. Now, one other question, which is these collection of correct of connections and these collection of dids, have they existed all along? I think I gather that they kind of evolved over time. Is that uh, the Key to did mapping and then the did to connection mapping have independently existed like from the beginning, okay. pretty much. So yeah, they've been around a long time. Okay. And then the same idea of going from a connection to their did to find the did doc to send it, that's all existed. Right. Um with the only change here being that rather than always looking in the wallet for their did doc information, we can also resolve the did doc information. And and we do that by looking at the did. Yes. Yeah. The did method basically. Okay. Right.
Yeah, did, yeah, the did is the key in the in the lookup of the um, the did doc objects. Okay. Now the other thing, um, Jason, I don't know if you looked at this, but um, in here is a legacy did doc corrections. Yeah. Which is something I think. Hang on, I don't know if you guys. Hearing, yeah, that looks pretty simple. Simple, similar to what I've been dealing with. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, verification method, controller, and then extracting out the authentication to reference the public key, which is no. Yeah, and that's pretty much the exact transformation that I wrote. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so um, that's now exists. Now is that limited? That's not limited to like what's it called? Legacy doc corrections. Yeah. Um, the, the 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 scope of this is what we just well, we, what we discovered. But what we realized is that um, yeah, the, the the existing legacy did doc was only used in the connection context. So yeah. I was worried about a bunch of um, a, a wide variety of did docs that may have complications or may have things that are un, um, that we didn't foresee, but if they're all connections, then there's a very simple transformation that gets done, which which I've which I've updated in my branch to have. But I think it's probably got a similar scope to what you've handled here, and it's probably redundant. Okay. But um, I'd, have, I'd have to look closer at the, exactly yeah. what you're looking at. But it, it, in the in your input output example, that is, yeah, the exact result that I'm uh, I was um, working towards as well. Okay. So. So now we're we're kind of covered. So what are the issues we've got? So what we want is that on receipt of a a request or a response, we want to be able to accept unqualified did peer two and did peer or sorry, unqualified and did peer two. And this then, is on receipt of a message from an existing connection or from a connection? On receipt of a, so the way I see it, there's the, where's my list? And I was going to write this out, but uh, hang on two seconds. I think that's what I'm at. <laughs> Just one sec. Apologize. Okay. So currently on um, we've got basically with did exchange, we only handled unqualified dids. Daniel, you've now changed it so that we actually can handle any did. Um, yep. Presumably, it still handles unqualified dids, correct? It does. Yeah. So if you pass your did doc in the message, it will store it as it did previously. Um, right as an unqualified value. Yeah, that whole thing, yep. Okay, so what we now want to be able to do is be able to receive a PID dir, uh, peer did two in the request or response. Right. Right, and that, that I don't think would be in the scope of your work, which is that the connections rely on this custom did doc class and a whole bunch of weird management, specifically the fact that the IDs of the documents themselves and the did themselves have no um, prefix, which throws off PyDid library and a couple other things that um, has made the transformations. Uh, yeah, have been have been rough spots that I've had to had to write around and, and build around. So I'm trying to figure out how. Well, but, this but hold on a second. But but hold on a sec. What I'm the scope I'm talking to in this conversation is simply did exchange receive a peer did and be able to store it. Yeah, that's easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was yeah. the connection, correct? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That's the simplest case, which is it. Okay. Both, both sides are sending and expecting did peer twos, yeah. With the one um, conversation that Daniel and I were having a bit back and forth this morning, which is, do you call, do you call their did 
the did peer two or the did peer three, do you ever reference did peer two again? Right. Um, My thought. If I, if I was a developer, I would expect their did to be the very last thing that we received. So if the last thing we received was a did peer two, but I think that's, I think that's an error in the fact that, yeah, if you receive a did peer two, I think we should assign the did peer three as the their did property. Um, because the other thing is like, does the controller, right? Does the admin ever need to investigate the did peer two? Like, will they ever, should, should, should they even be able to like see the did peer two, go resolve it themselves and then look at it. And it's like, none of that information should matter to them. It's all encryption keys and the service, right? Um, so no, I don't see any value and any reason to ever store a did peer three under the their did property of a connection. Did peer three or two? Sorry, did peer two. It should always be a did peer three. Yeah. Because all it is is the shorthand of basically what's la what the encryption is using and how do you prove that it's the same person you talked to last time. However, is that weird that that might change? I mean, I guess it's true of any case right now when the when key rotation happens, but that's true um, now. So um, that, that might always change, which is fine. So Daniel, what do you think of that? So that so what we're proposing is that on receipt of a did peer two, we would actually resolve the bid according to the rules, which is just a transformation. It's a text transformation. Right. <clears throat> and store that with the did as be, the identifier being the did peer three and the did doc being the expanded did doc. Yeah, the, res the resolution of the did peer two, yeah. Exactly. Great. Uh, uh, that seems reasonable to me. I don't have strong opinions on okay. whether that uh, that did peer two is, right. is what we store or, or not. Uh, and if, especially if we intend the did peer three to be what we identify them by in the long term, yeah, exactly. I think it would make sense for that yeah. to be what's stored on the connection. And yeah, because like because the, the other option is right, like you receive the first message and it's a did peer two, and then when you receive a second message, it's a did peer three, or it like stays as a did peer two forever, which seems weird. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think I think transforming it and saving the did peer three right away makes the most sense. Um, and then the question comes to: Has anybody written a did peer two to did peer three? conversion and that sounds like something we should probably add to the peer did library potentially the pilot library but probably the peer did library um which i haven't looked into because i've been just taking the did peer two and running with it um right. i haven't looked at that conversion yet so you calculate a did peer three by just taking everything that that comes after did colon peer colon two and then hashing it and then doing a multi-base multi-hashing coding of that hash and that's that is your did peer three yeah. yeah, I figured I figured it was a simple, a relatively simple operation, given that's the whole point of it. Um, but uh, I have not looked into what that is, and I, yeah, I certainly certainly can, or I can look at proposing that to the did library. So I will. Uh, so as well as long as it's well specified, I and I can figure it out. Um, then yeah, it should be should be pretty simple to do. It's just the yeah, the multi basic coding has been new to me, so I'm trying to figure that out. Okay, and then the only other. Only other issue that I would see, and it and it really doesn't come into effect in. Okay, so let me keep going. Every let me keep going with the steps we're going through. So we've got a we've got our current state. We've got did exchange, which is I receive a peer did two, I resolve it <laughs> and did peer three. I store that in the connection for their did. Um, my did I also store as the peer did three. When I create one, I store a, the 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 resolved peer did two. I I store it my did as a peer did three and so on. Okay, so that's that's good. Then after that, I'm still going to go by the key and the mapping. Yeah, I don't think we need to change that structure. You receive you receive a key, and you look up, um, and then you you work from there. That's the um, so the, the then the next thing we do is we add a flag that says use peer did two three. Yep. As a startup parameter, and in that exchange, in that 
The only thing that changes is that the did the did exchange request and response sends a peer did two instead of sending an unqualified. Um, correct. Yeah. Um, the yes, that makes sense. Yeah, I think I think I think the the complications. Sorry, the complications arise from upgrading existing agents. I think starting with agents that both understand did peer twos, did peer threes. I think that's what I think. We're, I think we're on the same page on that. And I think you you okay, described so it well. Up to there, it's, and then the last step I had is the upgrading unqualified dids to did peer two or three, two or three. And exactly, that's yeah. So you have a connection that's long lived, and then you upgrade your agents, and now you decide you want to promote or like migrate to using these did peer twos and threes. How do we do that? And that's where most of the complications come from because you have an existing did doc that might have a different shape because it's using an old model. And that's where some of this did legacy doc correction comes in and things like that. So, sorry. Yeah. Okay. So, so first of all, my thought was if we, if we upgrade an unqualified did, we would upgrade it to a peer did three. Uh, yeah, you would. So yeah, the method, the method has been what I've been trying to do because, and this, this doing this conversion in the way that, uh, I think you might've taken the same approach I did, which is like, how do I actually move these objects around? Um, and what I've now been doing and what I did the last day was just extract what you needed to generate the did peer two and just go generate the did peer two and throw up the old structure in the old document because you have the key and you have a service object, yes. just pull those out and use the peer did library to create a did peer two and create a did peer three, which we have nothing's done that for us, but that's fine. Um, that way you can actually remove a lot of the complications of the document you're trying to convert because we're only using it for connections, which means you're only using it for did peers. Um, and that was, a, that was the code that I was writing as of the day I left was what if we just take what we need and throw out everything else in the old did doc because those are the only two things we need. So I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, what benefit do we actually gain from updating old uh, connections to have a, a did peer representation? Because when we're actually messaging between the two parties, yeah, we never actually talk about the dids again. Uh, those are, are never actually visible. Um, except where perhaps when you're exchanging JSON LD credentials and you're trying to bind the credential to a specific did or something like that. But usually they would derive a did key, a did key from from their exactly. keys and provide that instead of using a connection did. Right. So I don't know the usages of that. You clearly do know more. Um, however, the data class that's actually getting deserialized out of storage um, I think we then have to sit around forever and handle two instances of that yeah. okay. class that have different members and different accessors. And then your code that got conditionals everywhere um, rather than writing a conversion method that says, if you see something that's weird, just go update it into a did peer. And then we can use the PyDid classes throughout um, and, and it keeps the implementation, I think, much more, much simpler. So I think there's an implementation and maintainability advantage, but I think you're right in the fact that yeah, if you could perfectly handle it all, the old stuff is still valid. And if we still know how to read and write, read, read from it, then off we go. Um, it's just that I wanted to avoid having, oh, let's use the PyDid did doc here and let's use the old did doc here and let's, um, and like have a whole, bu whole bunch of conditionals everywhere. Um, that was yeah. the, the main concern. That makes sense. Um, so with the 2404, that PR that I put in, um, the legacy period resolver will uh, will transform as we looked at. Will transform the the input uh, did doc, so the one that's retrieved from storage into something that is valid and pited would accept as a a did document. Um, <clears throat> I think those corrections are also non destructive in the sense that like if it pulled out. The document and it was already in the correct shape it's not going to change it again um, correct yeah that was a key thing as well in in my my writing of it um 
how are you so, hand so so the, the simplest example so how are you ha handling like pulling a doc out that has an id without a prefix because there's did docs um, that exist in storage that don't have that that just are that their top level id field is unqualified right. yeah like so, that yeah, that member won't solve. have did solve yeah uh, I think those I've been inserting did solve in, in front yeah. of them. Yeah, so it, then, yeah that, <laughs> I'm sure it's not a, an issue, but I think inserting did solve is not the right thing to do because did solve is an indie did resolver, resolves to indies. Yeah, right. So so, 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 what, my, the, so, what, so what my approach was, Daniel, was to not, not try and convert the object to object, just extract what I need and create a new did peer two using uh, uh, basically, basically from scratch, using as though it's a, as though it's a net new thing. Um, so it is, yeah, it's basically a different process to me. Yeah, which, which, I, which I thought was going to give me more stability and less um, handling of the details because what we discovered, Stephen, is that, again, this is only used for connections and connections only have two or three things we care about. And let's just hand pick those, pull it out, create, and then use the standard creation process um as though it's brand new and then just replace the old thing so um, let, let me explain for a moment some of the reasoning behind adding a did solve here because i think right. i think it probably makes sense even though it's semantically like incorrect for that to be a did solve did uh and the main reason is because that's how akpi has been treating these dids as a did solve mm -hmm. whether yeah. it's been posted or not um so actually, when I was implementing this this resolver here, uh, the regular expression that matches this uh, this resolver against dids to resolve and the one used by the indie resolver are actually exactly the same, except that um, in addition to checking if if the regular expression matches, this resolver will do a quick peek in the wallet or in the cache to see if it's a local did before. Yeah, saying no, I don't support this, and then and then essentially delegating to the indie resolver, like this is probably posted or a public did, so you can handle it, kind of a thing. So I think this already relatively well handles uh, both qualified and unqualified dids of posted or not posted uh, posture, if you will, uh, to use the language used here in Acapai. So it's uh, so for these unqualified dids, I guess what I'm feeling, and I don't, I'm not like super strongly opinionated on this front, but what I'm thinking is it might be simpler just to leave these as is, uh, since we already have a mechanism here for translating these to more modern sensibilities of how we should handle and process did documents and how sh how we should extract didcom information out of them um so I, I don't know that i see value in going through the effort of updating these um so Daniel, let me ask, are, so you're doing this as an on the fly transformation yeah it's taking the value out of the wallet and then transforming it as it's resolved as it's needed which means okay so right now in the did collection, the ID for these would be the unqualified name, right. unqualified string. And in the connection, the there did would be the unqualified. Correct. It's only and, when we are actually presenting, when we send a did doc that we, we add the did solve prefix, right. but it is being added. Um, at this point. And the yeah. only issue I see with that doesn't come into play until we go to DidCon 2. Right. Which, right. So my, my question with this, this, I guess. So my question with this approach is if we do continue, if we do convert the doc on the fly, you're going to end up with a, is it correct that you're going to end up with a connection that has a did peer three as the identifier, but when you actually go look up the document you've stored, the ID in that document is going to be a did sob of the old unqualified one. No, so what Daniel's saying is we're never going to up, update the 
unqualified ones. We're just going to leave them like this forever. Right. Oh, okay. And that on both sides, when you see an unqualified did, you stick a did solve on in front of it and be done with it. And that did solve would live throughout the entire code base because that's the other that's the other issue is that like Akapai is handling this like on the fly constantly of being like, oh, I'm saving it locally. I'm going to take the did solve off. Oh, I've got to show it publicly. I'm going to add the did solve. And I was hoping to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, abolish I, all I of that, that. And, and the plan is just to add did solve and leave it there forever, even though, again, like you said, so, that's semantically incorrect. Yeah, so when we transition to using did peer, the did doc class as it exists should be we, we should be able to just remove it since we're not, yeah, needing that's... it to take values that we're receiving in messages and then serializing it and all that stuff and storing that's it. Goal number um, one, yeah, agreed there, <laughs> good, yeah. <laughs> So it, it's, and I think that did doc class and its associates are the main perpetrators of the qualified versus unqualified adding prefixes and removing prefixes. I think they're the main culprit on, on that front. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I guess I'm also, uh, yeah, I guess I'm looking at it going, we now have a rigorous transformation that we think will work to get every connection to have a did peer exactly yeah why leave why leave a skeleton in the closet that might confuse somebody later even though you're right it probably would work forever um and yeah sorry i just noticed, yeah the semicolon india is the delimiter yeah you changed that okay good because that was the other thing yeah. that made no sense um yeah i think that's kind of my thought is yeah we could leave this as did solve forever but in a year somebody's gonna go oh did solve let me go look it up on the ledger wait how is it and nobody's going to remember that we had this weird quirk, right? And then it's just kind of uh, out there forever, I guess is my... And, and I'm more worried about it that it's going to... Well, I'm, I'm worried about the, the, the DIPCOM 2 transition. Also, also, what won't we end up in a situation where you have a resolver, right? And we see, what's the, what's the ID? And we're just going to pass that to a resolver. And the resolver is going to go, oh, it's got the did soft prefix. And it's going to handle it that way, rather than giving it the proper prefix and... The proper type. Uh, I'm not sure I follow it there, uh, but so I think leaving these as is is a, a bit of a closer reflection of what these were, what these are, and and that they're static connections that are there's no mechanism for updating the values associated with them. Um, and there's no need to update the value values associated with them on either end of the exchange because the connection information, the endpoints, the keys are still the same. It's just whether we've stopped using that structure in our wallet or not. That's the only change, right? Which I'm I'm all for, you know, deprecating things and getting rid of the old. And I, I'm not not in favor of updating the structure of these docs within our wallet. But I think they would still remain as unqualified dids, uh, and I, I don't think it would make sense for us to try to retroactively update these to be did peer resembling values. Hmm. And on the the didcom v two transition question, because these are static, there there's no way for us to update them. There's no way for us to communicate that we now accept. Did come be to to these existing connections anyways. So I sorry, think there, there is be... one there is one operation that would change, right? Isn't key rotation something that key rotation um, for mm -hmm. these key legacy dids is not supported for these? Yeah. Uh, it would be did rotation. Right. Okay. The did rotation. Okay. Okay. I'm not sure I understand that process, but um, I, it's the only thing I can. It's the only thing I've been warned could change after establishing a connection is that one side decides to rotate the keys. But if that's if I've, if I've misunderstood, that's fine. Um, I'm just just going through anything I've, that, I can recall. That in theory is supported, but it's not supported by did peer or unqualified. Ah, interesting. OK, I see, I see. Only for the publics. Right. Publicly published um, did. I see. OK, that makes sense. Yeah, of course, that makes sense. Um, OK. Hmm. 
and we we have like the crypto capability to do it as well but we've never gone through yeah defining the protocol for you know sending those updates and changes so so i mean we debated a few months ago prefacing these with did legacy peer which is essentially what you're doing with did solve except using well, essentially what is being done, not saying you did it, but you, right. you were following the pattern, right. um, which is essentially the same thing, but it's but this is to me worse because now we're confusing it with the legacy. The actual meaning of did saw. Yeah, the actual meaning of did saw. Yeah, I guess yeah, is, it, it doesn't, it, it's not any worse in my opinion because it's exactly what was confused before. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I get your point. Yeah. Because yeah. you could, um, change these, change this process to be, you know, so that we wind up with this being a did peer two, the output being a did peer two. Yeah, which right. is what my <clears throat> my most recent, after many attempts, my most recent implementation does is goes, oh, like. This document's old. Let me just reconstruct it with the key details starting brand new as those that did peer two. Yeah. Um, and using the libraries and using that to get to get consistency and predictability rather than holding on to edge cases. But um yeah, this is this is this is almost identical to what I had a couple of weeks ago. Um and I haven't obviously haven't looked at this pull request, but in 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 the attempt and in, in purpose, it's the same thing. Mm. Um, let me ask a different question. So, well, so you're suggesting, Daniel, that we just continuously do this on the fly as opposed to actually changing the stored data. Uh, I I wouldn't be against doing a migration step like in, in you know, using our usual my, uh, upgrade scripts. That's the word I was looking for. Um, and just changing the stored did documents to be something that's a little bit closer to what the output would be from this. Yeah. Um, I, I'm yeah, I'm not against doing that at all. Okay, so the, 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 the other piece here that we kind of determined, Stephen, and maybe, maybe, maybe I would love to make sure that Daniel on the same page is the exact shape and and structure in which the did the did doc is saved is only relevant to the person who's saving it, right? Like the the entire like JSON structure, somebody could save in an entirely different method, and as long as they know how to read it, it doesn't really matter. Um, so, uh, that was one reason why I was comfortable, I'm more comfortable with like a permanent conversion is knowing that there is no exact perfect shape that everybody uses. It's just, um, as long as you can, as long as you know what you're, you're so storing, um, it's more comfortable. Obviously the closer, the better, but it's not guaranteed or not mandated to be the same. Okay, so let me let me test out something that I'm thinking through right now. So for a DIDCOM one perspective, it doesn't matter what we call it or where we store it or how we store it for the exact reason that we always start with a key and we go to a DID to a connection. So as long as that path is there, and when we send out, we start from a connection, we go to a did and we we did we go to an ID, a did ID and then we get the did doc and then we get the key from that. So for, from a did comp one perspective, it does not matter. Do we agree with that theory? Yeah. So if we were to migrate these, it would make no difference 
until until we converted to until we started using DidCom two. Agreed. And and in, and in DidCom two. I don't even know if the, the on receipt of a message it would make any difference, but I believe that we would put their did and our did in or to did and from did into the message itself. So we start to expose that in the messages themselves. Correct? Right. Yeah. And if we did that, we don't want did sob in there. Right. So I, I guess the primary question I have in response to that is, do we intend for existing connections to be able to all of a sudden start talking didcom v2? Or will we have to establish new connections before we are uh, ready to begin talking didcom v2? I think we have to assume that It'd be interesting to know what they're doing in in um, AFJ, but I I would assume that we would have existing connections which would upgrade to DidCom v two. How do we indicate readiness to receive DidCom v two? Same way we're gonna go from unqualified to DidPeer two. We're gonna enable coordinate Community coordinated update. We we begin by being able to accept DidCom two connections and then and then transition to using DidCom two by default. So there will be an upgrade day where before we go down, we're talking all DidCom v one, and then we can start it back up, and then we're by default at least. Yeah. talking all did come be two to the same set of connections. Yeah, I guess where I'm getting to is, is less about how that happens, but more about the fact that since it doesn't matter, why don't we go to, since, since it doesn't matter in did come one land. Yeah. And in did come two land, we don't want to be showing did solve for these things because that's definitely a Akapai specific thing. Why don't we just, when we do the migration, we, in the upgrade script, we go from unqualified to did pair three. We upgrade the connection, their did, my did, and we upgrade the did to use did pair three. Mm -hmm. I think that makes more sense. That is the way that I've um, been leaning, is to try and convert and, everything to do peer two as we go. Yeah, and we just ignore it. And, and as I say, because it doesn't even matter in did peer one land, or sorry, did come one land, um, the use of dids and the did doc is all internal to the Occupy agent. It doesn't flow across. Yeah. I. Uh, I don't know that I, I'm not a fan of the, uh, the, the looseness, what, what I'm trying to articulate, what I'm feeling here. Uh, I, I'm not a fan of, we just, you know, all of a sudden we magically are aware that our remote connection has this corresponding did peer three. So we should be able to identify them as a priorly existing connection. Like I, I it's a very, like both sides just kind of have to know that that took place. Um, so it, in my brain, it feels cleaner. It feels more uh, in the spirit of the spec, I suppose, to establish a new connection with a new set of did peer dids that are clearly declared to be ready to communicate and did come v2. Based on, you know, the inclusion of accept parameters and, and did come service types and stuff like that. Uh, I, I'm not disputing that. 
I'm mm -hmm. just saying, I'm not, I'm not guessing how the transition from VidComp 1 to 2 will happen. I'm just saying that internally, it doesn't matter what we call these things. Yeah, and I definitely agree that that is the case. By but calling like, them, and, I guess and, I guess I question the value of going through the effort to make that conversion if it's not going to do us any good. Because even if we start just talking to Combi two and we're like, "Hey, you're now this did peer three, but I never told you this previously. You just have to assume that you know who I'm talking about." Like that that transition just doesn't seem like it's one that we can feasibly make. But, so yeah. Okay, but. What I'm saying is we want to transition it to something. We might as well do something that's fitting in a standard versus something that we're making up. Yeah. That's that's the thing that's bugging me. And, I'm, and so I'm saying that the only time it actually gets exposed externally is when we go to DidCom2. So as long as it's just internal, let's, let's make it at least be a standards-based thing rather than converting it on the fly and using the DidSoft. That's my thought. Okay, sure. I can, I, I think you've convinced me. I'm, I would be, I am in agreement that uh, if we can have an upgrade script that takes all of our locally stored did documents and translates them to be did peer three and, you know, uh, adjusting all the prior mappings and stuff to point to the correct connections. Uh, I would agree that that's better than having uh stuff that is like pseudo convention pseudo right. spec yeah so so what i'm wondering is would this change this this process change to being the take this input convert it to a did peer true convert it to a did peer three and resolve the did peer two to get this In other words, this becomes did peer three. This becomes did peer three. Right. Yeah, this this is essentially off. the transformation that would be required for yeah. doing that upgrade. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and that and that transformation you're describing, Stephen, is closer to what I have in my working branch, yeah. which is yeah. just extract what we need and create a did peer two as though it's brand new. Exactly. Um, and then we can talk about did peer two, did peer three from there. I don't know if you would want the did doc to have did peer threes as the IDs. So if that I feel was like the, you would keep them as did peer twos, but I don't know. That was a sneaky introduction of a topic. <laughs> don't do that to me. Um, which is, I think these IDs should be did peer three because you're never going to see a did peer two after the initial creation. Yeah. So I think these, and, and since, it's just a text transformation to go from the, you know, the did peer two string into this. These IDs can be whatever we want them to be. But by having IDs as did peer twos, you can always prove that the object has never been tampered or there's no errors in it because you could always be like, well, I think this is weird. Or I guess you could argue that's redundancy and you shouldn't do that. So yeah, but you, can, you can reverse the process. You can take the did peer two did doc reverse it and verify that it comes out to the same did peer three. Um, you can, right. Yeah, we talked about this. This is a triangle. It's not actually reversible. You take, you have the service and the keys, which creates you a did peer two, which you can then convert to a did peer three. And you can always turn that document and extract the service and the keys and recreate that did peer two. But it's not you can't take this object because, because we talked about this, right? Like you can't encrypt a, an object that has a hash of itself. You can't hash an object that has a hash of itself. Um, so yeah, you it's can. not. It's... In this case, yes, you can, because all you do is you extract this and you extract, you know, the, the public key 58. Oh, yeah. And you're done. Now you've got your did peer two. And now yes. you can verify that the did peer three that you get from that mm -hmm. matches this one. Yes, you certainly can. Um, and yeah, again, I would argue that's not a true reversal, but close enough. Yes, um, you were right. We could certainly do it that way. Um, the benefit of that is that you guarantee that the ID or that you, your goal is that the, that the ID of the did doc 
is the ID you're actually going to be checking it against. Exactly. Exactly. Right, rather than having to keep something around that's like, it did peer two's inside, but look it up by its did peer three or something yeah. weird. Mm -hmm. I see the desire there. Hmm. All right. I, I don't know if I've, we got a decision of what we need to do. I think so. I think, I don't know what, how or who, I don't know what, because this code's merged, right? Yeah, but this could be replaced. If yeah. we want. Right. So, I mean, is, is somebody wanted to somebody, is somebody looking to do that by itself or, or am I just going to continue with my branch and so it's, do, do it, do it slightly differently? Like, I don't know. It's not on my schedule at this point to do a, uh, that, that conversion. I'll say that much at least. Right. And, that, and that's fair. Um, yeah. Uh, and now I guess I'm, it would certainly be easier to convert from this corrected document into a did peer too, which is if you look up a connection did doc and it's not a did peer, <laughs> just recreate it as though it's a did peer. Um, that'd be the easiest way to, to, to look at that. Um, certainly easy to do. Uh, it would take, yeah, it's a very easy conversion because using- So I think, what I, I think what I would recommend is that we add a did peer three resolver uh, which just does a lookup in the wallet for a uh, did docker, right? Um, and then once that's available to us, we can go through and do the upgrade script and that will change all of your locally stored unqualified dids to did peer three. And this um, would be used. Right. And then you can, uh, this legacy peer did stuff would be a, a brief bridge uh, from now to that point. Um, but then once it arrives at the did peer three, we don't have to do as much of the kludging stuff that I've had to do in, in this resolver because of the overlap between posted and unposted dids and their, their qualification or lack thereof. Um, and so that would be a, a seamless migration to first do the did peer three, then translate from legacy to peer three, and then... Okay. Uh, by, by by upgrade script, do you mean a batch job or do you mean like a, uh, again, something that would upgrade on the fly as these things are going? Like an ACPI upgrade script. So, so when you, when you. ACPI has the content upgrade process. And you're talking like 0.9.2 to 0.9.3? Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know there was a, 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 a opportunity for behavior or injection at that level. So that makes sense. Yes. Okay, so what I'd like to propose is this. Um, 2404 stays as it is. Um, your PR, the scope of your PR, Jason, should include um, being able to receive both a, receive a PD2 and receive a unqualified did. If a deep PD2 is received, then send out a PD2, all to do with did exchange. Right. Um, that the key processing and all that in, in receiving a message and sending a message works properly. Right. Um, And that's as far as you go. Okay, so they did with the, the doc conversion that we just discussed. I'm trying to and think then, of that. And then the only big issue that I want to take to the community is what is the identifier that goes in the did? Did peer three which I think should be did peer three, but I believe in the spec it's did peer two. Okay. So I, I don't know if you saw my my last comment on that thread there. Um, Didn't, I might've. I can, I can voice it uh, to, yeah, for uh, 
brevity's sake, I guess. But uh, I am at least personally of the opinion that if we resolve a did peer two, it should give us a did peer two did doc. And if we resolve a did peer three, it should give us a did peer three did doc. And, um, and my claim is that, yeah, I, I don't think that's right. Uh, <laughs> I did respond to it and I've thought about it and I don't, I, I think that, I mean, we could put in also, also known as, mm -hmm. but I think, I don't know, I get what you're saying. It just seems wrong to, to use the did peer two for anything other than the transmission of the did doc. Well, I'm not. I'm not saying that we should necessarily use it for anything other than the transmission of the did doc. Yeah. But uh, I think, just purely from like correctness of resolving a did doc, I think it should always have the ID correspond to the did that was being resolved. Um, but then, from there, whether we use the also known as property or or not, which for the record I think is actually a pretty clean communication of. You know, yeah, this is the same subject. Yeah, between these two dids, kind of a thing. Um, I think we can take that and say, okay, I've seen this did peer two, so I now know that. Yeah, this corresponding did peer three would result to this document that looks like this, which contains an ID that corresponds to did peer three. Um, yeah, I, I do. I do agree with you, Daniel. I, I agree with both of you, <laughs> which is that. If I put in a did peer two, I should get the ID did peer two out. How how could anything else possibly make sense? But also in the fact that like did peer two is is did peer two actually a unique thing? And Stephen's arguing like no, did peer two is just a shorthand for did peer three plus did doc, which I yeah. also see but would not have agreed until Stephen made that claim right now. I would not have gotten to the same conclusion. Yeah, I think we have to, because it's been written this way, at least to this point, I think we would have to treat it as a full on like did method and it wouldn't make sense for it to resolve to anything but its own did doc. Right, yeah. Because there will be implementations that continue to use did peer two in isolation as just the only did peer thing for a while at least i guess so yeah to me i would put yeah so the spec clearly would have to change yeah yeah again in, and, uh, in which think, case yeah. if we did have a spec change I, I would push for us to change in the the other direction that you proposed where it's just a did peer three right. with uh did url um you know fragments on it that or query parameters whatever it is uh that specify oh, okay. that it corresponds to a doc <laughs> really that's yeah. interesting i think there might be some quirks to iron out on that front but like if we were going in the direction of changing the spec that's probably i would rather push in that direction than retroactively changing did peer two to behave differently. Okay. I don't know, Jason, if you saw that, but what I proposed was that that instead of sending a did peer two ever, you do did peer three colon with the did peer short version and then a query parameter question mark, you know, doc equals, and then this identifier goes into that the query parameter <laughs> interesting and then there's no question of what the, the purpose of did peer two is simply you know the purpose of that representation is simply to send the details but the actual yeah. it is three sounds like a did peer four and that's a that's a cruel joke i'm joking i'm joking i'm joking <laughs> Um, interesting. Hmm. I, yeah, I guess I see the value, but is it worth changing? Hmm. Yeah, exactly. 
Yeah. But one way or another, if you get a did pair three, how do you resolve it then? Yeah, you there has look to it be up, something. and if you don't have it, you throw it out. That's the yeah, only, there that's has the only to be answer. Some you know. prior knowledge. Yeah. Yeah, because you've got to have a way to receive a did pair three, look up and find the did pair two did doc. Yep, you, which is what you're saying um, is weird. Yeah. So you, that's why you want the result. Yeah, uh, that's also which, which I under which I understand is currently we're going to have to have two IDs to, for a did doc, two two ways to look up a did doc by its did pair yeah. two and its did pair three. We're going to wind up with which is where also known as would fit. Right. Yeah. Uh, which is also why I, I've like I'm fond of that approach because like it it that. Uh, you know, I am also known as this is really clean semantically, I guess. Um, yeah. So. And not even necessarily exclusive to our usage in, in a did peer context as well. I okay. Guess. Um, I would like Jason to be able to finish this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that is on my list of things to do. <laughs> so. Um, if the scope, so we have to make a call one way or the other. What are we, what are we going to say the string is in here? Uh, my vote down, my vote is down for it being a did peer two. Uh, that is the, currently what I think is the most expected and predictable, yeah. um, based on the existing spec. Um, okay. I think if we, there's two things we could do, for example, we could just insert at Akapi, we could just insert two references to the, to the doc. Like double insert, but that would be weird. I don't know. I don't know what the right way, what the right answer is there. But we have to decide because we need to finish this. Yeah. So we're going to make a call one way or another here. Uh, so so here's the thing. We can receive the, the did peer two, resolve it to the did document, and yeah. then not store it in, in the returned state. We can store it as being a did peer three value. We don't necessarily need to in perpetuity store the did peer two at any point and still have like all the benefits that we're looking for here and in, in having the shorter sure. form, right? Okay. So so in 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 the connection there did, what's it gonna be? Uh did peer three. Did peer three. Okay. And when you and when we do the key to did search, it's gonna be did peer three. Right. Right. So the so when you query your when you query your wallet when you query the database you're going to give it a did peer three and it's going to give us a document back that is a did peer two as the as the ID member. No, what I'm saying is that we would actually transform that document into being one that represents a did peer three, and so the IDs and controller values would all correspond to the did peer three that we stored. Oh, right. So, so we, we do we do what Stephen says, but only in Acapire. <laughs> And not as part of the spec. Well, well, okay. So the did peer two, in my mind, still resolves to a did peer two document. But right. we know that this did peer two corresponds to this did peer three. And so we're just going to store the document that would correspond to the did peer three with the, the ID values being peer three. Uh, but it, it was derived from the document that we resolved through the did peer two. Okay, let me try. If we ever receive a did, now the only time we're ever gonna receive a did is in request and response. And we're saying we're gonna convert those to did peer threes. Agreed? Right. Right. We would never receive a did peer two any other time Correct. Like unless, unless, well, again, like the idea was like if you get a new did peer two on an existing connection, you could like update the did doc. But that like even that doesn't make any sense, right? It doesn't make any sense because we don't it's have never a change. There's no method for it to change. Okay. So again, I come back to in the Akapai did collection. The document's going to look like this, with the only really question being, what is this string? And I think it has to be a fear did three.
because we've... I might be I might be splitting hairs in my dis- attempt to distinguish between docs resolved from period two and docs resolved from period three. But I, yeah, I, I agree that my... I agree that the stored value, the thing that we actually store as a did document within Akapai, should be did peer three. Did peer three with this value being did peer three. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's all so I mean. if if so if in Akapai we wanted to we had we had a did and we wanted to know if we had a did doc for it. If you hand if you if you ask for a did if you ask for the did peer two or you ask for the did or if you use the did peer two or you use the did peer three. You're going to get the exact same storage object back, Daniel. Is that what you want? Uh, no. If you gave it a did peer two, I would expect it to do the exact same usual resolution. Oh, it wouldn't even look two. it up. It would just it would just run yeah. the resolution yeah. from the left. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so the resolver goes did peer two. Well, I don't even need to look in my storage. I just yeah. have to run this algorithm to process exactly. it. And if it's a did peer three, it goes. Oh, that means it's in local storage, and I have to go look it up. Yeah. Interesting. And the yeah, and when we see a did peer two for the first time, or actually in any time, you're gonna say, Do I have a did peer three stored with this? Oh, I don't. Then I'm gonna go put it into my storage. And if I already do, then great, I don't need to do anything else. Correct. Interesting. Um, I think that's consistent. I think it gives us the simplistic advantages that we want with the implementation. It's a little bit redundant, but I don't think it's wrong. Yeah, okay. I think it makes sense. Okay, and then we're going to punt on the migration for now until we get more of a community understanding of what the migration would be. Migration for handling legacy. Even migrating unqualified dids to did peer three. We're just going to punt on that for now. Uh, okay. You're not going to do anything in that area. Right, so what does that mean? Oh, right, because this code exists. Exactly. The, the other code that see that Daniel already yeah. wrote exists. Yeah. So the class, the actual class chain, the actual class migration that I've been doing is obsolete or is not necessary because Daniel's already done it in his. And we're changing the scope of what it is supposed to do anyway, because we because there's too many open right. questions about it. All the things that you've raised as questions are still open because they're community questions, not questions we can answer. Okay. Uh, okay. I will need to look at the code that I have. I probably will either refer to this recording or maybe I'll reach out once I've started to, to actually write this stuff. But yes, I think I, uh, conceptually, I think we have an understanding of what we, what we want to accomplish. Well, the first thing we need to the do scope right of my work now. is right now. Right. Here is, here is the scope of work you're going to do to finish off, which is in did exchange. Yeah. Be able to receive both. If you receive a PD2, you in the request, you send out a PD2 in the response. Otherwise, you're always sending out unqualifieds in both. Right. In the response. Then there's a flag you're going to add use PID dear, peer did two, three. Yeah. And when that is set, then Start when, sending them by default. When you send a request, you're going to send a peer did to. Yeah. That's the only behavior change that that flag does. And then, and that's as far as you're going to go. You're well, going to... Uh, also, but also, also the storage thing we just talked about, which is that yeah. when you get receive a did peer two, you're going to save. Correct. You're going, you're going to receive a did peer two version, and you're also going to convert did peer three and save that version. No. No, I think the only thing you're going to do is save. Oh, right. Sorry. Yes, yes, yes. You're only going to save the did peer three. Right, right, right. Um, resolve did peer, yeah, did peer two doc. And then you convert to, on. I'm going to put did peer three doc in quotes. <laughs> did yeah. peer three, I did doc and store that. Do not store did peer two doc. Correct. You are going can to write, always can always be reconstructed easily. You're going to add to our did resolver a peer did two resolver and a peer did three resolver. Right. Peer did two will not look at local storage. Peer did three will. Right. Correct. I've also got to figure out how that works. Uh, real quick, I don't know if you can look at it quickly. Um, the resolvers are expecting methods, and now we have. 
details beneath methods. And I don't know whether in the did resolver, is that a, to, to write that as a did peer resolver and then a whole bunch of if statements or so have the, a did peer two resolver and a did peer three resolver and just check a little bit after the prefix. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Uh, so yeah. the, the did resolver actually is just asking its set of registered resolvers whether it supports a did and it gives the did in full to the, oh, okay. the resolver to check and see if it supports it. Okay. Uh, the default behavior enables you to use, uh, there, there's a shorthand for if you just want to do like a regex match to see if you support the did or not, you can yeah. define the supported did pattern or, or match, whatever I called the, the method. Um, so you can specify a regex and as part of that regex, you're, you're matching against the full did, not just the method. So you, you should be able to write a separate did peer two resolver and a separate did peer three resolver without needing to worry about uh, you know ifs and else's and okay all that good stuff. that's it's exactly the answer I wanted I just wasn't sure how to get there um, but yeah that makes that makes that makes sense okay cool so I can override that um, yeah yeah that regex slightly because yeah because yeah. that is the end result of what I've been trying to do um, twenty twenty four oh four the pr twenty four oh four that I added uh, which adds the the legacy peer resolver peer did resolver um you can see what the supports method looks like um but i think you should be able to accomplish what we need to by using the supported did regex pattern still right okay um okay one more question for um to get expertise um Daniel, do you think we should do this for the connections protocol or just data exchange? Or defer that question until after this will get merged? Yeah, that's a good question. I've been debating that myself uh, for the 2409, whether I needed to apply those changes to, uh, to connections as well. Um, I think we could. Uh, I don't think the implementation would be dramatically different between the two. Um, so it'd be similar changes made in four locations instead of two, four being request response in did exchange and request response and connections. Um, but I, I, I don't know. I'm a little, I'm conflicted. I'm not sure I have a, a strong opinion okay. one way or the other yet. yet. So, um, Jason, for the scope of this PR, can, uh, did exchange only. Yeah, yeah, and that was what I had limited to. Do. So that is um, that is consistent. We simply add another issue and another PR to do it to connections. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. That should be all the answers, I think. The the only thing, right? And if the, if, if 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 while you're accepting the old stuff, don't use the did resolver pattern at all. Just skip it and use the existing in method code that's been handling the unresolved stuff okay i think that makes sense that was a question for daniel not me <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think yeah it's, said, just, it's just that just that we we can't centralize everything through this did resolver structure because right. we're still gonna have to handle all these on this old unqualified did behavior that is yeah. in the resolver structure yeah if we get a did doc attachment then the existing code will still be run yeah Exactly. Yeah, that's what I was going for. Okay. okay. Well, yeah. Thanks for your guys' time. This helps. And Excellent. obviously, that's I was awesome. away for a week, so this gets me back up to speed very fast, which is nice. Um, yeah. So awesome. I'll turn away at this and let you guys know. I've cut a bunch of meetings this afternoon, which is a little weird. Usually, my light day is pretty quiet, but um, yeah, tomorrow I'll definitely probably uh, have a good GitHub update and. I don't think there's any need for the one o'clock meeting for you, just so you know. Oh, like the refinement? Yeah. Maybe just skip that and, and keep working. If you've got, if you know what you're working on and you do right now, let's just go with that. So don't okay, worry. Okay, then maybe 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 I'll take you up on that because that would probably, um, yeah, benefit. Good. Can I skip okay. that meeting too, Stephen? Yes. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah, sounds good for, for this one, obviously, with uh, the timing of me just coming back. So that's good. Okay, awesome. Thank you. All right. How was, uh, how was refereeing last week? Um, it was good. It was, uh, yeah, it was exciting games and uh, meet some new people. And yeah, it was, uh, it was a really good 
a really good event for me. Not not perfect, but never is. Yeah. I, yeah. I, there, I, I may I may have a, another time off question for you in uh, end of September if, if something comes through. But I'll I'll hold off until I get a until I get a request until I get an email an invitation and call it. Yeah. Daniel, uh, Jason is a lacrosse referee and a hockey referee. That's nice. right. Yeah, so I was uh, doing an event in Vancouver last week. Nice. And yeah, so we'll see. I don't, I don't want to say anything until things happen. So I'll, uh, I'll let you know if something comes. But uh, yeah, I got another, something potentially something on the radar for late September. And to right. go with one other cool sideline job by members of our team, Wade is going up to a drag race where he is an official. He and his family are officials. His wife used to be a drag race driver. Oh, he doesn't drive. He's he's an official for those events. That's cool. He's an official for the events, and and uh, Tracy is the announcer these days. But she used to be a driver. Oh, that's fun. interesting. Cool. Very, very unique. Yeah. All right. All right. Thanks. For, thanks for your time, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. Yeah. Yes. Thanks. Yeah.